Good morning, champions. Ah, uh, good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of the beloved. It's like you don't believe it. Say to yourself, I am the beloved of God. I am begotten of love to gift hope. Say it again like you mean it. I am the beloved of God. I am begotten of love to gift hope. Now turn to your neighbor and summon that to our neighbor. Say neighbor. Guess what? Christmas is here. If you thought about Christmas decoration the whole year, raise, raise your hand. Oh, I'm not alone. Oh, we are many. See, your sister thought about it the whole year. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. We've been on this and we've been talking about begotten of love. Today we look at first. Love bears all things. I read from the New King James. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. NIV says, love always hopes. That's our focus today. Love, hoping all things. When we say hope, hope means expecting something with desire and confidence that that which is expected will come to pass. Personally, when I hear the word hope, it immediately implies that what is, what is in the present is not what I like. Immediately implies that the present isn't what I would have wanted it to be. So I hope for something better and different in the future. If the present is exactly what I want it to be, I have no need to hope for anything in the future. Our text today simply says, love always hopes, if you are within IV, or love hopes all things. And in trying to understand the text, I had to ask myself four questions. What is a love that hopes all things? What am I hoping for? Who am I hoping in? And why do I need to love a person with hope? Last time we talked about love believing all things. Today we are looking at love hoping all things. And if you've been paying attention, it may feel like both love believes all things and love hopes all things are the same, but they are different. The key difference seems to be the fact that while believing all things speaks to the now, speaks to the present, hoping all things speaks to the future. Now in believing all things, Love chooses to deliberately believe the best about people until proven otherwise. It puts the best interpretations on people's actions and people's motives and trusts that what they have probably heard or seen is not as bad as it, seen, as, as it seems. But in hoping all things, love, in the face of undeniable facts and indisputable evidence, still stands and then even when everything has been proven that they are as bad as has been said, as bad as has been seen, love confidently expects, anticipates, and even intercedes for a turnaround. Therefore, a love that hopes all things is a love that sees possibilities in the face of none. It is a love that continually looks for good, for the good, and expects the best no matter the situation. This is a love that doggedly refuses to give up on people. It looks forward with confidence to that which is good and beneficial. In action, Paul describes this love as a love that corrects the unruly, comforts the faint-hearted, upholds the weak, is patient with everyone, and never takes the failure as a defeat. We are still trying to understand my first question. What is a love that hopes all things? A love that hopes all things is a love that always expects anticipate and prays for the best in others without holding their past against them. It is an optimistic kind of love 
an ayafon, ayakbo kind of love. It looks beyond the present failure and refuses to give up in the face of adversity. It continually hopes for that which is good for others, even when everyone else has ceased to hope. And believes, despite everything, that all will turn out well. You can simply say that this is the Romans 8.28 kind of love. All things will work together for good. So you're looking at the present. It doesn't look like it, but you hope that all things will work together for good. A love that always hopes is that which sees the potential in people. It is a love that fixes its eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. Sometimes what we currently see about people, about our children, about our spouses, about our neighbors is completely hopeless and irredeemable. Loving those people, loving that child, loving that spouse, loving that neighbor, loving that person in hope demands that you look into the eyes of God and see who that person can become with and in God and sticking with that picture, not with the picture in front of you. But since I had many questions and I'm still trying to understand, I asked, so if love is, if love that always hopes or love that hopes all things is a love that expects good to eventually triumph over evil, who are we hoping in? Because I don't know about you, I think it would be insanity to continually hope in a chronically irresponsible and unreliable person that only brings you heartache and disappointment so where should we place our hope when it is proven that this person does not want to change who is the object and source of our hope the scriptures answers god is why he's the only one who can turn a hopeless life around now when you say i'm hoping for the change in somebody this is not some feeble cross the finger wish um, be, uh, um, no, cross the finger like I'm just wishing that he will change this is not that kind of a thing it's a settled sureness a confident expectation that the God of hope will uphold his word and finish the work he has started in the lives of our loved ones could be our sons, our daughters our spouses, our neighbors even our parents a person who loves another with hope confidently waits for the Lord holds firmly to God's promises and continues to hope and believe for the fulfillment of that which has been promised. The key word being continuing to hope. Because that which is presented before you in the present is nothing to write home about. So if love continues to hope, what is love hoping for? Because the person before you does not want to change. He's actually comforting. He doesn't think he has a problem. Love is hoping for the transformation only God can bring. Why do we need to love somebody with hope? Why do I need to love some, uh, my, a person that I know with hope? I once read the story of Adam Clark, a famous Bible commentator. As a schoolboy, his class teacher introduced him to a distinguished visitor. This is Adam Clark. The stupidest boy in school. The visitor later pulled Adam aside and said to him, Don't worry about what they say. Keep working hard. Someday, who knows, you might become a great scholar. And he did become a great scholar. More than 200 years after he had left planet Earth. We are still reading his commentaries. We all at one time or the other need people to love us with hope. Loving with hope implies, among other things, that we refuse to accept the failure of another human being as final. It is going down the valley of the shadow of death and looking a, death man, a dead man, a dying man in the eye and giving him hope. We need to cultivate this dimension of love. Because it is the way God loves us. He says, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. What would have made him to do that if not this hope? If we fail to love people with hope, if we fail to always love with hope, we would keep burying our loved ones alive. 
When we give up on people, when we write off people, when we label or designate a person as a lost cause, what we actually do is that we bury them with the breath still in their nostrils. Adam's class teacher had lost hope in him and in losing hope, he lost love for the boy. Consequently, he buried the student he was entrusted to teach alive. The visitor handed him hope and in so doing showed him that the love he desperately needed to overcome his crippling failure. Love gives hope. I deeply believe this text is calling us as a church, calling us as the body of Christ to love the people the world referred to as hopeless, irredeemable, rebellious, insensitive, a lost cause, at your own. It is a call to never stop loving with hope the chronically weak and insecure, the chronically unreliable and un irresponsible, the incurable pessimist, and the difficult to teach individuals. These people could be within our families like our spouses. They could be our children, siblings, or even parents. They could be within our friendship circle or they may, they may be members of our own parishes or congregations who sit side by side with us week in, week out and hear the same gospel that is transforming our lives, yet their own lives do not look like the messages they hear. It is a clarion call to you and I to look past the present failures and flaws of people and hope for a better future. It is a call to see the God-invested potential of the people that are presently giving us diverse headaches and recognize that they are, we all are, a work in progress. God is calling us today to keep hope alive until the end for that seemingly ir irredeemable, hopeless and unrepentant family member. Anybody can bear up for a while. Anybody can believe for some time. Anybody can maintain hope for a day, but it takes a heart that is sold out to God to love in a way that it bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person and its hope remains steadfast and are faithless under all circumstances. Think about it for a moment, even as you're listening to me. Who have you given up on? Whom have you written off as a lost cause? Who have you lost hope over? Who right now within your sphere of influence needs you to love them with hope? Who do you need to leave this service and gift hope through your love? Why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to bring their names and faces back to you? Because sometimes due to the diverse disappointments and headaches and the many problems they've caused us. We close the chapter so firmly on these people that their memories is deleted from our head. We don't remember them because we are also trying to protect ourselves from future hurts. If God can raise a man who'd been dead and buried for four days, he can change the lives of our loved ones if we would keep hope alive and keep interceding for them. Rise as we make our confessions this morning. Please say this with me. I am begotten of love to love always in hope. I am begotten of love to love always in hope. Christ is my hope and he lives in me. I have a hope that is stronger than failure and death. I choose to intercede daily for everyone I know that have been written off by others. My hope in the promises of God will never disappoint me. I am a trustworthy intercessor. Nobody connected to me is irredeemable. I am a being of love. I am called to love selflessly and powerfully. Daily, 
I intentionally yield to the working of the spirit of love. I will love especially when I don't feel like loving. I am not quick to write people off. Nobody around me is a lost cause. I will be careful to give the room. I will be careful to give people the room they need to grow and the grace to mature. I am aware that the God who is at work in me is also at work in others. I am begotten of love to always be hopeful. I am healed and empowered by the Spirit of God to love. I cannot lose my hope for the transformation of other people's lives. My hope is firmly rooted in God who specializes in turning lives around. From today, I refuse to hold people's past against them. I will prove my love by keeping hope alive for my loved ones. I am begotten of love to be God's vessel of hope in my sphere. God uses my life to dispense hope in hopelessness and redeem the irredeemable. I refuse to learn the world's ways of loving people. I am a model of God's love to everyone around me. I will always pray and expect the best for others in my in faith. I will not take failure as defeat in the lives of family of my family and friends. I in any Patrick Grace Henry put your name. I'm flourishing in love. God's love has taken up residence in me. Just raise your voice and begin to tell God, restore me to love. Restore my heart to love. Help me to give the hope that I want to receive. Help my love to always hope and not give up. Let my life be a daily display of your love. Help me to hope for the best in everyone that I meet. The Lord awaken me to love that hopes all things. Awaken me to love like you do. Awaken your nature of love in me. Awaken love in me. Help me to love like you do. To see like you do. To hear like you do. To talk like you do. To relate with people like you do. And when all is said and done, may I be known for my love. May my life dispense your love to my world. May my life reflect your love to my world. May my life mirror your love to my world.